Here is the full true story of the revelation on land, a tale of fire, iron, and a frenzy that reshaped the world, beginning with George Stevenson's rocket. The revelation on land, the railway revolution. The story of the railway is not merely one of technological invention, but of a fundamental revelation that redefined humanity's relationship with distance, time, and the very land itself. While rails and wagons had existed for centuries in primitive forms, often horse-drawn, the true revelation was the marriage of the high-pressure steam engine to a dedicated track. This union promised to annihilate the old constraints of geography and muscle power. The proving ground, Stevenson's Rocket, 1829. By the late 1820s, the potential of steam locomotion was understood in theory, but not yet proven in practice. The Liverpool and Manchester Railway, the world's first intercity railway built to rely entirely on steam power, was nearing completion. Its directors, however, were uncertain about the best method of propulsion. To settle the debate, they organized a public competition, the Rainhill Trials, held in October 1829. The rules were strict. The locomotive had to weigh under six tons, maintain a minimum speed of 10 meters per hour, and pull a load three times its own weight over a distance of 70 miles. The prize was $500 and the coveted contract. Into this arena stepped George Stevenson, a largely self-taught engineer from a poor Northumberland background, with his son Robert, and a new machine, the rocket. The rocket was not a collection uh, of isolated inventions, but a brilliant synthesis of emerging technologies into a superior whole. The multi-tubular boiler, this was its masterstroke. Instead of a single flue, Stevenson used 25 copper tubes to carry hot fire gases through the water, dramatically increasing the heating surface and steam production. This gave the rocket far more power than its rivals. The separate firebox. The firebox was mounted at the rear, separated from the boiler but integrated with it, ensuring a more efficient and controlled burn. Forced draft. Exhaust steam was blasted up the chimney, creating a vacuum that drew a strong air current through the fire, making it burn hotter and brighter. Direct drive to the wheels. The two large driving wheels were directly powered by pistons set at a 35 degree angle, a design that provided stability and effective power transfer. At Rainhill, the rocket was a sensation. While its competitors broke down or failed to meet the requirements, the rocket chugged steadily up and down the track reaching the then unthinkable speed of 30 miles per hour without a load. It proved itself reliable, powerful,